Okay guys, welcome to the bad ending for Diana. I don't care about them. It was true. I didn't care what they said about me. I was here for Diana, not for them. Diana stared at me for the longest time before smiling but nodding. Right. We went to bed that night knowing that the days ahead would resume to be full of work, struggle and the need to be strong for each other. I woke that morning, however, alone. I slowly sat up, feeling the pillow beneath my head, and Diana was nowhere to be found. <laughs> Diana? I looked around confused and lost. Where did she go? She wouldn't have left the room without waking me. Isaiah? I called her a real name, hoping she would appear at the sound of her true name. Still nothing happened. I was still alone. The storm in my gut suddenly pulsed, sent me a wave of worry through my body. Something was wrong. I quickly jumped out of the bed, got dressed, and rushed to the war room in a panic. Maybe she was there, doing a meeting without me. Maybe I'd overslept. Diana? Instantly, inside, however, were the Demon Rebellion leaders and Zero, all with equally worried faces. She's not with you? My eyes darted around the room, seeing no succubus in sight. I walked in, shaking my head at the rabbit's question, causing people in the room to grow even more concerned faces. This is a problem. No shit! Where is she? My eyes instantly went to Zero. Seeing him panic, his eyes darted back and forth on the table, his expression painted out of fear. Suddenly, he began to storm out of the room. I must find her! Before anyone could stop him, he ran out of the room. Join him. He wasn't the only one concerned about where Diana was. I rushed out after him, seeing him dart off down the hall. Follow him. I was suspicious of Ciro. Something about him. Something about how he was going about this caused red flags to wave through my mind. Why was he hiding her like in my dream? Was he hiding her like in my dream? As I suspected, Ciro stopped walking and opened a small passage hidden behind a large painting. Where was he going? I followed, determined to find Diana. I pushed the painting aside and wriggled into the passageway, becoming engulfed in darkness as the painting on its own closed behind me. It took every ounce of my self-control to keep quiet and not gasp in surprise. I placed my hand on the walls and followed it forward, trying to remain quiet. As I reached the end, I found Ciro kneeling in front of a pitch-black room. I didn't understand how he was illuminating in the darkness, but as I watched, he lowered his head and prayed. Please forgive me for what I must do. Look away for this one moment, for I work in the name and peace of the five worlds. I shall bear my sins to death and into purgatory for all of eternity. I felt like running, rushing back out of the passageway. Something was dark about this entire situation. I prayed Sarah muttered, muttered barely made sense. Why was he doing this? I didn't get a chance to run as Sarah suddenly looked back at me, locking his eyes with me and freezing me in place. His eyes were glowing a pure golden colour as Lara crosses and bed themselves at uh, his irises. Oh, great. My body was unable to move. I couldn't even breathe. I struggled against the hold on me, but to no avail. Sarah pointed his hand to me and willed my body forward into the dark space. With a dark smile, Sarah licked his lips and stood up, standing tall before me as he stared down at me. I could feel the judgment and hatred in his eyes pierce my soul, like I was slowly being not worthy of the breach. I was being denied. I was slowly being not worthy of the breath I was being denied. Come here, human child. Uh, um, I'm very scared. That actually sent shivers, chills down my spine. I don't like the fact he called us human child. Um, um. Zero. I became both fearful and confused. What was happening? I could barely concentrate the lack of air in my lungs, causing the room around me to spin. My body quaked against Zero's hold, but he continued to walk me forward towards him. As I came within arm's reach, Zero gently wrapped his hand around my throat and lifted me up. You know, you could have grabbed my arm instead of my throat, but whatever. I could barely feel his grasp, nor could I flay about, still caught in his spell. I could not let him... I only let him move me further into the darkness, pressing me completely against a wall. Sarah so lifted one of my arms to the side of me, stretching it out and pressing my hand back against the wall on its own. It remained, as if Sarah did the same to my other arm. I was completely open, as if I was laid against a cross. However, there was nothing holy about this. My vision began to darken as I suffocated, my body desperately calling for air as Sarah allowed air to fill my lungs. I gagged and coughed violently. <coughs> Sarah, what are you doing to? 
What are you doing to me? My voice is breathless, pain from being denied air, and my body remains still in place, glued to the wall behind me. <laughs> However, there was nothing holy about this. My vision began to darken as I suffocated, my body desperately clawing for air. As Sarah allowed air to fill my lungs, I gagged and coughed violently. <coughs> uh, Sarah, what are you doing to me? My voice was breathless, pain from being denied air. However, my body remained still in place, glued to the wall behind me. <laughs> Sarah only smirked at me, holding his arms out with a hideous laugh. Sarah observed me from my place on the invisible cross he'd placed me on. Rejoice, human. You are about to become part of something much grander than you could have ever imagined. Seriously, have you been taking drugs or something? Or have you been taking too much sweet flowers? What are you talking about? <laughs> Sarah laughed, arching back to cackle at seeing this. He looked back to me. I could see the jealous monster behind his frightening eyes. You have no place here, human. You should be grateful that I am granting you a purpose. A gift from heaven above. What are you babbling about? Isaiah! I called it desperate to stop Sarah at all cups. However, it didn't work before... Before... Then it didn't appear. Sarah smirched even wider and stepped up to me, looking with the most maddened eyes I'd ever seen. You are unworthy of speaking her name. Says you. I snarled, pulling at my limbs to try and move. Alas, I could do nothing. Sarah stepped back and summoned his spear, dancing a hand over it and examining his grasp. Whatever delusions you had of being with her will fade away as you pass on. Eh? So that's it. You're going to kill me? I'll haunt you the rest of your life. I was frightened, but my anger masked my fear. I didn't want to die, but I wasn't going to cry in front of the psychopath wanting to take my life. As Sarah looked at me again, he chuckled darkly. You won't be able to haunt me from within Heaven's gates. What? That's right. I plan to baptize you, cleansing you of all of your sins before I trade your life for a promise from Heaven's most powerful angels. You will be bathed in light and will forever live in the city of Heaven. Isn't that such a wonderful gift? You totally confused me with that. I tried to find some sort of weakness in Sarah as they stared in his eyes. I figured out what the hell he was. You're an angel. Sarah grimaced at the word, shaking his head. Half. I am what angels call a tainted Nephilim. One who is born both by the light of heaven and of the taint of magic. I was dropped into this world after being born, and I was cursed to never return. That explains this by here. I stared and believed what I was hearing. However, Sarah smiled, an almost innocent smile as he gave soft. However, I was blessed enough to be found by Isaiah's father and mother. They took me in, and when I started to walk, they introduced me to their daughter, my lady Isaiah. I have been by her side ever since. But when I was old enough to know of love, her family realized what I was. Sir ran his fingers across his chest with a large scar that decorated his skin. What did they do to him? I was tortured by the king's men. Oh my god. And was chained in the lowest cell of the dungeon. I was there for god knows how long until Isaiah found me and demanded I be released to her. She saved me from a fate worse than death. Oh, that's horrible. Wait, they tortured you because of what you were? That's not fair on you. I'm sorry, but you can't help the way you were born. Sarah looked at his hand, shaking as a crazed smile painted itself across Sarah's cheeks. She is my goddess. My oh, savior. Oh, boy. My purity. She took pity on a being like me and even showed me how to truly love. I was blessed to feel her lips on mine, her hands across my skin, the warmth of her innocence. Uh My son began to churn, disgusted by Sarah's filthy expression. As he looked at me, he suddenly glared hard. And you came <laughs> and demanded that she be yours. You dared to claim her when she is not yours to take. She's not yours to take either, she belongs to herself, but whatever. Fear suddenly took control of my core. It was true. I tried to take her as my own, pushing Sarah violently away. Was this my just desserts? No, it couldn't have been. I left her and wanted to protect her. Again, with all the actions leading up to the bad ending, um, 
our character was being very like controlling of Diana, telling her what to do, saying that Diana belonged to her and everything. And that's really how the bad ending comes about with this. Um, for those that aren't aware of what I did to get to here. Um, to get to this point, what Sarah is referring to is that through like the start of the right game up to the bad ending, you got to choose like the answers where you're controlling Diana. You tell her what to do. You say that she loves you, that um, you want her and everything like that. You try to get in between her and Sarah, make so Sarah um, gets pushed away and stuff like that. You even, and you don't tell her about the dream. I don't know if that actually did have an effect or not, but hey, I just thought I'd throw that out there. That's how I got to that ending. Sarah spitted on the ground, laughing quietly. Well, as her honored protector and lover, I will permanently remove that little delusion of yours. You will no longer have the chance to take her away or be with her ever again. Sarah was insane. He barely just even a wild smile as he set a spear beside him. You will be in heaven, and Isaiah will rule over the demon world as its true queen until she dies. When that time comes, we will go together to purgatory and live within its eternal realm in peace. You're a monster. Actually, he's a. D <laughs> You're a monster. Oh, I don't think it has the effect anymore on them. A monster I may be, but I will happily bear that sin if I can protect her from you. Suddenly, Sarah twirls the around and rammed it in my stomach, caused me to choke out a cry of pain. My body shook from the intense pains, but it dripped from my wounds down Sarah's spear. I cleanse you of your sins. May heaven embrace your spirit and welcome you into its white city. Ugh. The soft feeling of feathers danced over my skin, and I could feel my mind becoming quickly blank. All the memories I suddenly began to burn away. My family, my friends, the demon world, everything was being dissolved into nothing. My vision became, became dark as the pain ripped through my body. The spear remained within my body, draining me of life. Before I finally embraced death, I could hear Sarah speak one last phrase. It is finished. My sweet... Beautiful, Isaiah. While I would hold you in my arms forever, your people need you. But I wish to stay with you longer. We cannot stay long, but if you insist... I do. As you wish, my queen. Repent for your sins, S. Okay, so in that end of course, Sarah gets pushed to the point where he literally just goes full out controlling and he puts a spell on Diana and takes control over her. And that, of course, is all of the endings for Diana's route. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. And that, of course, wraps up Seduce Me to Diana's route. We've gone through all her endings and we've got all her CGs and wow, that was just awesome. Cool. Okay then guys, I'll see you in more Seduce Me where we go after the boys' routes. Oh my gosh, that was wicked. Oh gosh, my eyes are worrying. Again, there was letters at each different ending as well, so um, they probably spell out something for the bonus. So we're right down them. I don't know if the particular, or I'm guessing the order is the way they're seen by here with the CG. So you're supposed to go... James, Eric, Sam, Matthew, Damien, Diana, and then there's this one down here. Unless they're just extra CJs, I'm not sure. But we got a couple of letters. We should write them down because we're going to need them. Unless it says seduce me to the demon war. Anyway, bye-bye guys. See you in the next seduce me episode.